What's up, guys? I am here to finally talk about Prometheus. Uh, Ridley Scott's return to the genre and the universe that he, you know, he made. Um, and there's so much to talk about with this movie. There really is. I'm sure I won't get to it all. Um, so I'll try to not be as slow and rambling as I usually am, but we'll see how it goes. Let's, let's just plot. Let's get the plot out of the way first. Um, basically, these geologists discover a cave painting that is a star map, and it, it matches up to all these other geological findings, like ancient findings, and they figure out it's the star system that's really far away that you can't see from Earth, and so these ancient people must have been visited by someone that knew about these stars, and so they go to, and they figure out there's a planet there that could support life and this and that, could have the conditions to support life like Earth. So they go out on this uh, mission to investigate it. Uh, it's led by Dr. Elizabeth Shaw, who's played by Numi Rapace, who I believe was in the original uh, Girl with the Dragon Tattoo. If she was Lizbeth Salamander or whatever, she's looking pretty different here. Um, still cute. And anyways, they go, and the Wayland Corporation funds this trip, um, and you find out why they fund it. They go, and then they run into trouble. In typical alien movie fashion. It's a, it's definitely different than the other alien movies. It's definitely trying to be a little more serious and asking kind of big questions about where humans come from. Um, and, you know, some people will criticize it for, for being pretentious because of that. Um, I... I'll be right up front. I liked the movie a lot. I enjoyed it quite a bit. I had no problem with it, really. I mean, there, it's not its not flawless. It's not the greatest thing ever. But it still felt like a pretty special sci-fi movie. And, just, and it was just fun to me. I think the reviews are kind of all over the place on this. They really are. I haven't seen a movie like this in a while where it's like no one could seem to agree on Prometheus. You have people that really love it. And I'm probably closest to their camp. I really am, because I thought it was... Like I said, I'm recommending it to you. You have the people that really love it. You have the vast majority of people that are just kind of like, eh, it's okay. And then my review might kind of sound like that, but I'm, I thought it was more than okay. I thought it was more special than your standard Friday release. You know, middle of summer, whatever. Um, and then you have a lot of people that really hate it. A lot, it's, you know, it's good. The reviews are, I forgot where it stands on Rotten Tomatoes, but it's kind of really all over the place. I know on an IMDb, it sits at like a 7.7. .7. That's kind of where if I was doing like a 10 point rating scale, I'd probably put it at like an 8. Um, I think the people that are really disappointed with this went in with expectations that were too high because it was really Scott, because he was returning, you know, to the franchise he helped create. I think people might be expecting more of a direct prequel. Uh, although I will say this is totally prequel, man. I don't get where you know uh, Ridley Scott says it's not. It just has strands of DNA. Strands of DNA. You have the Wayland Corporation. That's from that universe. You're in the alien universe right there. You have the synthetic on the ship. I don't want to spoil it, but you have lots of other things that tell you this is a freaking alien movie. Just maybe not with as much aliens as you expect or, you know, as much horror or violence. Although that's there. That's in it. I really don't want to spoil it, but I just... I don't get the hate for it. It, And I saw... Rambo Raff, he did a, a nice rant, like hour and seventeen minute rant. I did, I did watch it all, but he's just hating on it, and it's just you can't take it too seriously. And I guess the movie invites it 
it invites itself to be taken seriously. It really does. It wants to be a serious sci-fi film. So, you know, I guess if you're gonna take that route and you want to criticize it and say it's a piece of shit, fine. But I, I went in going, man, this is getting really mixed reviews. Let's see how it's gonna be, you know. And I, I was like, as I was watching, I was, I was having fun. I was entertained throughout. It, you know, moved along quick enough, and it was entertaining. And it was visually breathtaking, like a very visually beautiful film. So uh, I came out of it, ha I had had a fun experience. Um, there's an all-star cast to this one besides Numi Rapace. You have Michael Fassbender as David, the synthetic that's on board. He probably gives the most interesting and best performance in the film. Because Michael Fassbender just plays this, this robot very well. As something that doesn't have actual human emotions, but is curious about the world, and uh, and the, you know you you're never sure of his motives and you know whose side he's on and this and that. Um, Idris Elba, who was uh, shit, I forgot his name on the wire, but he was a big character in the wire for a while. He's in this. As like the the captain, the pilot, whatever, and he's he's fun in it. I mean, he's not in it much, but he, he I liked his character a lot, especially the character between him and the the person that's kind of like the boss on the ship, who is played by Charlize Theron. I liked her in it. She was looking sexy as hell. Uh, she's totally totally straight up like a she plays the part like it's, it's a bitch. She's a bitch, but. I liked her. I liked her performance. And I liked... I forgot his name. The guy that... His name was Charlie in the movie. I forgot the actor's name. He plays... Uh, Numi Rapace's boyfriend in it. You know, fellow geologist. I don't know. What can I say about this? I don't want to spoil it. But it's definitely... It's an alien movie, man. It's in that universe. You find out a big part of the movie, and I'm not trying to spoil it. I'm really not trying to spoil anything, but this is like a big part of like the main plot of the movie. Actually, is finding out what the space jockey from the original Alien was. And once it's a good twist. Like I, I didn't see it coming. I guarantee you no one else going in is going to see it coming. What the space jockey is. And that's kind of what the movie is about. Because they go to this other planet, and that's what they discover is the dead space jockey. And then she starts going crazy. I don't want to spoil it. But there are some some great uh, horror scenes in it. There are some great action scenes. There's one part where there's a storm coming and they have to get out of like this part of the planet that they're exploring. And they're basically just like just outrunning the storm and then crazy shit happens when they get back. Um there is another, I mean, I, I really don't, I can't say too much without spoiling it. But let's say someone gets a creature inside of them in this one, just like in every other Alien movie. Um, the issues, there's issues with it. There's two things, two criticisms that I had and I've seen other people have, and I agree with them. There's one part where these guys, they're exploring this planet, and they're inside, like, this kind of structure, like, in it. And these two guys get spooked, because they see something, and they, they're like, two of the members of the crew, they're like, we're going back to the ship. You know, our, our job here is to map this structure, and they did that, they sent out, like, these, like, red balls that map, are mapping the structure. And they're like, we're going to leave, because we're scared. And somehow they get lost. Well, it doesn't seem like a very... Like, you can see the map. It doesn't seem that complicated to figure out how the way you came from. Like, it doesn't seem that hard to retrace your steps. It's not a fucking maze. And on top of it, these guys are the mappers. They map off the place. And they're in contact with Idris Elba on the ship. Who can tell them where to go. Because he's watching the map. And he's watching where everyone is on it. It didn't make sense, really. And I caught that as I was watching. I was like, what the fuck... I mean, you get why they're doing it, because they want to get these two guys separated from the group, and they could be the first victims. 
but it just doesn't make sense. Um, the other thing that I I don't feel like they answer fully, and there's a lot of things that they just bring up and don't answer fully, probably because they they want to just raise questions and leave room for sequels and you know more explanation in a further film. But David, the synthetic, does something kind of vicious to someone else. And I, I, it's kind of explained why he wants to do it. I just don't if, understand what exactly he was hoping to achieve by doing what he did. And that's as uh, vague as I could put it. But I'm just like, why exactly did he do that? I mean, it, his his motivations are kind of explained. And his, his loyalties are explained as the movie goes on. But you're still kind of like, well, what was doing that supposed to solve? There's and there's other things that you could pull out of this nitpick, but I'm just not. I didn't go into it taking that ser that seriously. I'm like, I'm going in to see an alien movie or sort of an alien prequel, sort of. You know, I get that it's not 100 percent like supposed to be leading up to the events in the first one, but it's in that universe. It's before the first one. It's kind of like you're kind of expecting an alien flick, and I kind of got what I wanted out of it. I really did. It was an exciting, you know, sci-fi movie. Not as much horror, but there is horror. Um, and just lots of cool ideas. I thought there were lots of cool ideas in it. Um, I think that the problem is, is people maybe take the Alien franchise too seriously and they think it's more than it is. Go watch them all again. It's... They're all fun, they're all great, but this isn't like the most important thing ever. And this movie tries to take itself a little more seriously, and it wants to be more important than the other Alien movies. And I think for some people, it didn't quite achieve what it was trying to do there. But even if it falls short, I think it's still up to the quality of a good Alien movie. I, I, it's hard for me to explain my thinking on that, but it's just like, yes, it tries to be all serious, and you could say it's pretentious, whatever. It maybe doesn't pull it off 100%. It's not perfect, but it still puts it up to like up to the snuff of the other alien movies if you ask me is it as great as alien or aliens no it's not as great as aliens or the original alien um it, and it's definitely not as uh, as much of a fun it's not an action flick like aliens but i'd put it almost up there with aliens like right below aliens fuck ton better than alien 3 and definitely better than Alien Resurrection, which I also enjoy. So, I, you know, and light years beyond AVPs. So, I don't know. I, I just don't. I guess I get the reaction, maybe. I don't. It's a movie that has, there's a lot to it. And it's very ambitious. And it leaves you with a lot to talk about. So people are going to, definitely going to come out of it with their opinions, and all opinions aren't going to be the same. But here's the thing: like I see, you look at like a YouTube video that someone posts up about this movie, the comments go on and on and on for pages because people are talking about it. It's getting you talking. That's always a good thing. It's not another piece of shit. I think it's much better than that. I thought it was quite entertaining. I had a lot of fun with it. Like I said, there's little nitpick. There's little things that are like, what the fuck. You know, there's there's things that I don't think are... Like I said, this is not, to me, the greatest movie ever. I know I'm kind of going in circles with this, but it's still quite fun. I'm glad I went to go see it. And I thought it was a pretty damn good sci-fi movie. Is it the best science fiction movie of the last, like, ten years? No. I think Duncan Jones is doing the best, most relevant sci-fi right now. The most original shit. I loved Moon, and I loved Source Code. If you haven't seen those movies, go see them, but... They are the pinnacle of sci-fi right now. With small budgets. This is just a big budget fucking space opera, and it was great. Is it as great as the, the small Duncan Jones movies? No. It's still good, though. It felt special to me. It felt like something that had there was a lot of care put into it. And a lot of fucking money thrown at the screen. And it's definitely better than a lot of movies where it's just money thrown at the screen. I guess I'll just kind of leave it at that. By the way, I saw it. I saw it in 3D. 
I didn't see a 3D IMAX. Here's why I want to see movies from now on. I either want to see them in I want to see them in IMAX. That's my preference. Second preference would just be regular 2D, okay? Fortunately, the only theaters around me, unless I want to go downtown in the city, you're getting regular 3D or 3D IMAX, which sucks. But it just turned out as a, like I was doing a bunch of things the day I went to go see it. I, I couldn't get to the regular 2D showing that I was going to do. And the 3D IMAX showing was later. So I just, at the time that I had available, that showing was 3D. And I actually am happy I saw it in 3D. I'll be honest. I've never said that before about a 3D movie. But I liked the way this looked in 3D. Especially, like, just the way the stars and the way space looks in 3D is really cool. And there's a lot of holograms in this film. Uh, which I think looked pretty damn cool in 3D. You'll hear other people say that the 3D is quite good in this, but I I have never said that about a movie. And I saw, what, uh, Toy Story 3 in 3D, and everyone said the 3D was great in that, and I was just like, whatever. I didn't care. I saw, what that was the movie I saw a month or two ago in IMAX 3D? Oh, The Avengers. The, the 3D, I, I didn't care for it. But here... The 3D looked pretty fucking awesome. And on top of that, it wasn't distracting. Like, it never hurt my eyes. I never had to lift the glasses and rub my eyes for a minute or two. And the movie is, you know, it's got a very, like, kind of gray tone to it, to a lot of it. So it's not like a bright movie where it's going to hurt your eyes. Or, uh, like, the, the dullness isn't going to hurt it. Because 3D does kind of dull the picture a little bit. So I, I honestly recommend seeing it in 3D. If you're going to go see it. And I think you should go see it. I really do think it was a good movie. I know I kind of just said that over and over. But well, I guess we'll leave it at that. I I think it's the third best Alien movie. Even though it's technically not an Alien movie. Or whatever. I mean that argument's going to go on forever. And I'm going to give it 4 out of 5 stars. I liked it a lot. It has its flaws. It has its issues. But it's fucking beautiful looking. And it's fun to watch. At the end of the day. Isn't that... I mean... Yes, you'd love greatness, but I will settle for, you know, fun to watch and good looking any day, and I'm never going to be pissed about that. And, uh, you know, tr try to have fun at the movies. That's all I can say. Try to have fun. Go in with an open mind, and every once in a while, maybe you will have fun, because I had fun with this. Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> Anyways, thanks for watching. I can't wait to hear it. Please leave your comments and your thoughts on what I had to say about it and just what you thought about Prometheus in general. Anyways, thanks for watching to my long rambling review, which I promised wouldn't be rambling, and I totally lied and totally said nothing. But later, guys.